Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Renoy here for our Kids Be Beginner Karate class. Let's go ahead and get warmed up. Put your feet together, hands by your side. We we'll always open our class with a bow. That's how we show respect. That's how we say hello. How are you guys doing today? Ready to work hard? Fantastic. Let's get to it. We're going to start off with 20 jumping jacks. Every jumping jack has a clap at the top and a slap at the bottom. Ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Excellent. When you're done, down in push up position. We're going to do blast off push ups instead of a regular push up. So watch close. We're going to have our body all the way flat on the floor. Our hands are going to go right next to our body, underneath our shoulders. The balls of my feet are digging into the floor. From here, I'm going to blast off all the way up to a push-up position, and then lay all the way flat on the floor. Blast off to a push-up position, and then lay all the way flat on the floor. When you blast off, do your best to make your body go up together, not one part and then the other part like a wave, but everything together like a flat tabletop. Let's try five blast off push ups. Go. One, two, three, four, five. Good, when you're done, have a seat. Legs crossed, hands and knees. We're gonna do five sit-ups all the way down on your back, all the way up, slap the ground in front of you. Ready, and go. One, two, three, four, five. Fantastic, when you're done, stay seated. Put your feet together and pull them in close. We're making our legs into a shape of a butterfly for a butterfly stretch. Grab onto your ankles. Use your elbows to push your knees all the way to the floor if you can, and then bring your chest down towards your feet. You want to go down as far as you can until you start to feel a stretch in your legs. That stretch means you're getting more flexible, means your muscles are getting ready. Hold that stretch. I know it's gonna hurt a little bit, but if you hold it, that's how you get that flexibility. Five, four, three, two, one. Shake it out, flap those wings. Pull it in a little bit closer if you can. Push your knees down even farther if you can, and bring your chest down closer to the floor if you can. You wanna go a little bit farther so we're improving our flexibility even more. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Excellent work. Put your feet out in front of you as far as they can go. Reach up as high as you can and reach down towards your toes. Your goal is to grab the toes if you can or even farther, but we always start off with the first step. Grab your pant leg if you're wearing long pants, grab your ankles or your leg, if that's too easy, then you reach a little bit farther. Go for your toes. If that's too easy, you reach a little bit farther. Go for the balls of your feet. If that's too easy, reach a little bit farther. Reach for the heels of your feet. But whatever you grab, you want to hold it tight. Don't let go. You got to keep your legs straight the whole time, too. That's the hard part. Reach and hold. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. Relax, shake it out. Let's go one more time so you can reach even farther. Reach up and down as far as you possibly can. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Fantastic job. Hopefully your legs are feeling all warmed up now. 
The more you stretch, the more flexible you can get. That means also the higher you can kick, the better your stance on your quad flat. So that just makes a big difference to take some time to stretch. All right, let's all stand up fast. Two more feet together, hands by your side. Oh, come on, you guys can stand up faster than that. Even my pet snail can stand up faster than that. Let's try again. Legs crossed, hands your knees. We gotta be fast with everything we do in the cry class. When I say stand up, we stand up lightning fast. Don't let my pet snail beat you again. Ready? Get set. And don't move. I said don't move. Where are you going? You guys got li your listening ears on? All right, let's try again. Ready? Get set. Stand up. Okay, that was a little bit better. Hand in. Step over. Chumbi yell tip. Chumbi means ready position. We use our chumbi position to turn on our superpowers. You might be just a regular, ordinary kid when you get up in the morning, but when it's time for karate class, you gotta turn on those superpowers. Now, I say that partly as a joke, but it's partly true. When we get our body and mind in the right mindset, then we're able to do our best. Sometimes when we get up, we're not quite feeling it. Sometimes throughout the day, we get tired. We start getting goofy, right? We have all different mindsets we can be in, but when it's time to work, when it's time to do our karate, we gotta be in that mindset. And to do that, we turn on those superpowers with our chumbi position and our kia. Now, I understand some of you aren't in a place where you can really be yelling right now. Maybe you have people you're gonna bother, people that are trying to do something. That's okay, if you can't yell, you're just gonna breathe. But if you can yell, we're gonna use that yell to help turn on those superpowers. So in the cry class, we yell tia. If you don't wanna yell, you're just gonna breathe as hard as you can. Let's try it, ready? Hands in, step over, punch down, yell, tia. Excellent job, now you're in serious mode, time to do some karate. One more time, Cheer up. Hands in, step over, jump in position, yell, tia. Excellent, now put your right leg behind you, hands up, tia. Now we're in our fighting stance, we're gonna warm up with some punches from this position. We're gonna do front hand, back hand, put them back up. So it's the double punch. One, two, and back up. We always have our hands up in front of our face. That way we're always safe. If somebody tries to hit us or attack us, we can block it easily from here. If my hands are busy, if they're taking a lunch break and somebody tries to punch me, I'm in trouble. I'm going to get hit. So always keep them up where you can see them. Here we go. Double punch. Go. Tia, two. 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 And kyote, switch your feet. Punch with your front hand first and your back hand second. Ready, go. Tia, two. Go. Tia, two. Go. Tia, two. Go. Tia, two. Last one, go. Tia, two. Fantastic. Kyote, switch your feet. Now I'm gonna add on a kick to that combo. So it's gonna be punch, punch, and kick. We're doing the front kick for the front kick. We bring our knee up first, and then we snap and kick with our foot. Hopefully your legs are feeling nice and warmed up after that stretching. So I wanna see if you can kick nice and high on this. The higher you bring your knee, the higher your kick goes. It's how you aim your kick. If I aim low, I kick low. If I aim high, I kick high. Let's try it. Hands up. Tia. Tua. Asa. Excellent. All three. Punch, punch, kick. Go. Tia, tua, asa. Go. Tia, tua, asa. Go. Tia, tua, asa. Last one. Go. Tia, tua, asa. And kyote, switch your feet. Other side now. Try and keep up. Ready? Tia. Other hand, tua. Kick, asa. All three. Go. Tia, tua, asa. Go. Tia, tua, asa. Go. Tia, tua, asa. Go. Tia, tua, asa. Last one, make it your best. Go. Tia, tua, asa. And butto back to your chumbi position. And show. That means you can relax for just a second. I'm going to talk. Now, you guys are looking great with these karate skills. I know some of you guys here on Zoom with us have been here before. If you guys are watching these recorded, some of you might have done these before. Some of you might be jumping in for the first time. Either one's fine. 
if you've been here before, these skills might look familiar. You might not, you might already Excuse know me? how to punch and kick. What was that, Pavav? You know how you said that if you're what if you're doing the karate that's recorded, I was doing that the one with when you were using that sword. Just so you know, I don't have a sword. You took the lightsaber class? No, no, not that. Like you were using like a serious sword. Like I did both of them. Oh, like, you took both of those classes. That be very on cool. Star Wars day and this other sword one. Uh huh. But very it, cool. Just... So. Some of these skills, if you guys have done these classes before, might look familiar. You guys have done some punches before. You guys have done some kicks before. You're starting to get the basics, right? But it's important we still practice those skills over and over again. If you want to be able to defend yourself with your karate skills, if somebody's trying to attack you for real, you got to be really proficient with these skills. You don't have time to think about it in a real fight. Hmm, what was it Mr. Benoit said to do? All right, put my hands up. All right, put one foot back. All right, for a punch. If you take that long to think about it, guess what? You already got knocked out. No good. We got to be able to do these karate skills on a dime, lightning fast. Just like when I said stand up, you stand up lightning tall. That should be a natural reaction. When I say fighting stance, you got to be in your stance right away. You got to be ready. Otherwise, you're going to lose that fight. That's why we practice these skills over and over again to make sure that they're permanent. The more we practice, the more permanent they become. So you guys are looking good with your punching and kicks. I'm going to show you a different stance today and a different way to throw your hands as you strike instead of punches. Now, I just mentioned our fighting stance is a great way to keep yourself safe. We always have our hands up if we need to defend ourselves, but there is one problem that our fighting stance presents. If somebody's threatening me and making me uncomfortable, maybe they haven't actually done anything yet. Maybe they haven't tried to touch me. They haven't even tried to hit me, anything like that. But I'm getting worried, I'm getting scared. Maybe this person is gonna attack me. If I make my fighting stance right away, as soon as I'm scared, that does a couple things. It is helpful because I'm ready for a fight. On the other hand, it shows my opponent that I'm ready to fight. And then they think, A, that I know how to fight. They might be expecting me, then I might be in trouble. Or B, that might aggravate them farther and might make it more likely for them to try and attack me if they think I want to fight. So instead, we use a different stance today. This stance is called a sneaky stance. Just like a fighting stance, I'm going to put one foot back and then put your hands up. That's it. Again, so yeah, one foot back and hands up make your sneaky stance. So in this position with our hands open, does this look like I want to fight anymore? Not so much, does it? Here, maybe someone in Zoom can answer me this. What does this position look like with my hands up in the air? Marco, what does this position look like? Stop. Kabob said stop. Very good. Marco, what do you think? Stop. Looks like stop. Right, so with our hands up like this, it looks like stop or it looks like I surrender. It definitely doesn't look like I want to fight. Here's the sneaky part of the stance though. With my hands up like this, can I block quickly? Yes, I can block real quick, just like from my fighting stance. From this position, can I strike quickly? Yes, I can either close my hand and throw the punch, or we can do palm strikes. That's what we're going to work on next. But from this position, we can strike quickly, and we can block quickly. So it's very similar to our fighting stance. However, it doesn't look like it. That's why we call it our sneaky stance. So the first thing you should do if you're ever worried or scared somebody's going to attack you, take one step back and put your hands up. From the sneaky stance, you're ready to defend yourself, but you can still try and defend yourself with your words. More so than punching, kicking, your words are gonna get you out of a lot more sticky situations. You can tell that person you don't wanna fight. You can tell that person you didn't mean to make them mad, right? Maybe they're angry about something they think you did. Use your words to talk to them and figure out a solution that doesn't involve people getting a punch in the face. As cool as the karate fights we see on TV shows and movies are, in real life, it's not fun being in a fight. Whether you win or lose, you're gonna get hurt, and we don't want that. So we'd much rather get away with our words. We say stop, 
we say, I don't like that, we say, back off. We use our words to defend ourselves, and if that doesn't work, and they still try and hurt us, then we can use our strikes. So let's work on our palm strikes, yeah? One foot back, hands up, sneaky stance. Bring your fingers tight together for your palm strikes. If they're loose, we're more likely to get our fingers hurt. So put them tight together. Now from here, we want to strike with the bottom of our palm, almost like we're giving a high five to our opponent, but we're using this bottom part of our hand here. Not so much our fingers, they're not as strong. So I strike with the bottom part of my palm one hand, and then I strike the other hand, just like our punches. Let's try it. Double palm strike. Tia, two up, and they come right back up. Ready, go, Tia, two up. Go, Tia, two up. Go, Tia, two up. Go, Tia, two up. Last one, go, Tia, two up. Excellent, switch your feet. Let's try the other side. This hand strikes first. Go, tia, tua. Go, tia, tua. Go, tia, tua. Go, tia, tua. Last one. Go, tia, tua. Excellent. And cute with your feet. Okay. I've been talking a lot. Let's give you guys a little bit of time to get moving and get working with these strikes. So I'm going to give you guys a choice. You can either work the punch, punch, kick or you can work the palm strike, palm strike, kick. You can even mix and match if you want. Sometimes do palm strikes, sometimes do punches. But practice that three-piece combination. Strike, strike, kick with your fists, or strike, strike, kick with your palms. I'm gonna practice for a minute on each side. I'm gonna watch how you guys are doing. Ready, hands up. Close or open your choice. Ready, and go. See what you guys got. Ava's got it. Nice, very good job keeping your hands up. I love it. Remember, every time you do a strike, it always goes right back up where you can see it. That way you're always safe. Very nice, Marco. Take your time a little bit, don't rush it. If you go too fast, you might get sloppy. You want to do strike, strike, kick. Strike, strike, kick. Keep going, Pavad. Get to work. Um, when I was kicking my, my knee hit my tooth. Your knee hit your tooth? Oh, my goodness. So make sure even if you're kicking high, you're not kicking up towards your head. Strike, strike, and I kick up towards the shoulder. That way, worst case scenario, maybe my knee hits my shoulder, but I'm not going to hit my head. Okay? Strike, strike, kick. Good. And time. Everyone switch your feet. Let's go another minute on the other side. Ready? Get set and go. Other leg back, strike, strike, and kick. Gonna start with your front hand, Ava. So the other hand starts. One, two, three. That's it. Well done. Not too fast, Marco. One, two, three, and then hands up. Two, three, and hands up. Looking good. Remember, if you're not yelling, make sure you're breathing. I like to yell personally. Tia, tua, asa. But if you're not a good place to yell, breathe out on each technique. Three, two, one, and time. Fantastic job. So now we got some strikes down, punches and kicks. Let's work a little bit on defense against our opponent's attack. So today we're gonna defend against the push. Maybe our opponent isn't trying to punch or kick us yet. They're just trying to knock us back 
or they're trying to intimidate us. So oftentimes, again, in movies and TV shows, you see this a lot, the push, somebody walks up and they're trying to push you away, either just to make you mad, either to intimidate you, or either to maybe push you back to fall over and hurt yourself. But for whatever reason, they're coming up and trying to push us. The first step is to get out of the way of their power. Imagine a train coming towards you. The train is coming, 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 coming. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna A, try and block the train, or B, get off the train track? I hope get off the train track, otherwise you turn yourself into a pancake. So the same is true if an opponent is trying to put lots of energy into their push. That's the train. I don't wanna stay on the train track and try and push the train back or block the train. It's not gonna work. I wanna get off the train track. So we're gonna practice this with two steps. I move one foot and then I move the other foot and I turn myself a little bit sideways. Then I'll go the other way. Step with one foot, then the other, and I'm a little bit sideways. Ready? Step, step, off the track. Then the other way. Step, step, I'm off the track. Try this a little bit on your own. Step, step, and back to where you started. Step, step, rewind. Step, step, and rewind. Again, make sure you're getting out of the way. Imagine train tracks on the floor. You want to jump away off the train tracks as you turn your body just a little bit sideways. Good. If you're getting a hang of it, see if you make it a little bit faster. Stand perfectly still. You're on the tracks and then dodge out of the way. On the tracks, wait your time and then go. Excellent. We're getting it. Good, keep practicing. Now I want you to put your hands up in your sneaky stance while you do it. So I step to the side, I'm gonna keep my hands up the whole time. Step to the side, I keep my hands up. Okay, very good. So now we're gonna use our hands to help as well. In this case, we're not dealing with an actual train, so our hands are gonna be able to help a little bit on this. As the push is coming forward, we're going to try to deflect with our arms. We don't have to push too hard, we just wanna deflect a little bit. So as it comes towards us, we step to the side and I use my one arm to deflect and block. We're using our outside, to inside knife hand block. So bring your hand up, bring your fingers tight together, and then your hand comes across your face. Try the other hand, fingers together, across your face. Fingers together, across your face. Up and across, up and across. Just like that. All right, now we do it with our step, our hands are up, I step off the tracks and I do my block. Then the other way, step off the tracks, do your block. One and two. Now, let me ask you guys a question here on Zoom. Let's see if you guys know the answer to this. If I'm stepping to this side here and I'm turning my body, do I wanna block with the hand closer to my opponent or the hand farther away? Raise your hand if you have the answer. Am I blocking with the hand closer or the hand that's farther away? For Bob. Closer. Closer, yes. Do you know why that is? Because if you take cause if you take minutes and if you get ten hits, that's not good. Yes. What do you think, Ava? Does that sound right? Yeah. So we're blocking with, you guys are both correct, we're blocking with the hand closer because it's gonna be faster. If I try and block with this hand that's all the way back here, it's gonna take a long time for it to get around. So I just block with whichever hand closer. All right, let's try that a little bit. Step off the tracks and block. 
step off the tracks and block. Good, and time. Looking good, everybody. So after we block our opponent's push, we have a few options. We can either run away or we can stand and fight. And this is going to be up to you guys. You're going to have to be able to think it on your feet for this. If possible, you would probably rather run away, especially if there's someplace safe you can go. If there's somebody you trust, like a parent or a teacher, that you can go find, that's a great place to run away to. However, if you don't have an option to run, if there's nowhere to run or somebody's blocking the exit, then you might have to stand and fight. So after we do that block, we're going to strike back to our opponent. We're going to block with one hand and punch with the other. Let's try. Everyone hands up. Step to the side. Do your block just like we just practiced. Now take the other hand and punch. Good, now try the other way. Step to the side and block, punch with the other hand. Step to the side and block, punch with the other hand. Block, punch. Block, punch. Make sure you're still off the train tracks. Block, punch. Block, punch. Block, punch. Good, keep practicing that. Let me see how you guys do it. Start in the middle, step to the side, block punch. That's good, Ava. Just try and do that block a little bit faster. As soon as you take this step, block punch. Much better. Good and time. Everyone shot. That means relax. Fantastic work. So we'll get in the hang of this. If somebody comes up to try and push us, we want to get off the train tracks, block it, and we strike back. We do our counterattack. Again, if possible, you might rather just run away. After you get off the tracks and block the push, I might just run away. Or I can block palm strike instead of punch to push them away a little bit and then I can run away. You guys have all different options, and part of your karate training is being able to have all these different tools in your imaginary tool belt that you can take out for different situations. Oh, I need to push them away. I know this technique. Oh, I want to make sure they can't hit me back. I have this technique. And the more advanced you get, the more tools you have in that metaphorical tool belt. Okay, so I'm going to do this drill one more time. This time, it's you versus Mr. Benoit. I'm going to be the bad guy doing the push, and you're going to have to get out of the way, block it, and hit me back. You ready? Okay, let's start at a tension position. Put one foot back and make your sneaky stance. At this point, you're starting to sense that I might be coming for you. You're starting to sense that I might be getting upset or angry, and I'm likely to do a push. So now you're ready for me. Your hands are up. As soon as I step and push, you got to get off the train tracks, block, and punch. Ready? Go! Cool. Okay, I think you got it. Let's do it again. You got to be ready because I might push at any time. Poof. Mmm, pretty good. Ready? Don't go. Not yet. Gorgonzola cheese. Ready? Golf balls. Don't go on sandwiches. You knew that, right? Ready? Go. Oof. Ready? Go. Oof. Ready? Go. Oof. One more. Go. Oof. Okay. Well done, everybody. Have no attention. Here we are. And yet, you balance it. Come on, Sumida. Put your right hand up. 
Loud tongue su on three. Hana, to, set. Tang su. I hope you guys don't ever have to use these skills to defend yourself. But if you ever do get attacked, hopefully now you're a little bit more prepared. <laughs> 